I never experienced what it was like to be a minority until I left El Paso. Moving out of the States for Northern States made me realize that I was literally one in 50. Female, Hispanic, engineer. Coming back to El Paso made me think a lot about this and made me want to do some research as to why I was one in 50. The most recent statistics tell a story, and that is that we're losing our girls' interest starting from middle school, their interest in science, technology, engineering, and math. We are failing in bringing and keeping women in the field. This, this prevents us from building groundbreaking innovation in our world's most biggest challenges, like infrastructure, space, ex space exploration, and much more. So starting from the beginning, what affects a woman's career choice? To, in order to understand this, we have to take a holistic approach, a systems engineering approach. Yes, you have the girl in the center, but around her are a set of systematic influences that guide her to this choice. She doesn't do it alone. Some influences are bigger than others, but in the end, she doesn't do it alone. So now that we know this, what can we do as women and as a society to bring more women to STEM, keep them, and make them prevail in leadership? The first thing we can do is foster the growth mindset. We don't want to be fostering the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset is a belief that you are born with certain traits and they become your characteristics. It's who you are. You can't change it. The growth mindset on the other side, which is the one that we're trying to foster here, is a belief that you're born with certain traits, but you can change them and develop them. And develop them. This creates a love of learning and resilience that is essential for great accomplishment and success. So, we need to start fostering things that foster the growth mindset because it creates a bad pattern for women. See, when women believe that they are math at science, bad at math, for example, or math, bad at science, they actually will score lower in their max, math exams. So we don't want this. Um, as a Latino household, we need to stop embracing phrases that trigger the fixed mindset, such as, no, mijo, tú no eres bueno para las multiplicaciones, eh? Or, no, mija, tú no naciste para la cocina. Even if it has nothing to do with math or science, you are still fostering the wrong mindset. The second thing we need to do is add more storytelling to STEM. A big reason why girls don't come to STEM is because they believe it doesn't align with their desire to make an impact in the world and make a change. I remember when I was little, I used to think, yo quiero ser una doctora para curar a mi familia y ayudar a mis amigos. I was failing to see that there are many other careers that can help our communities and especially our families. So teachers can have an impact. Professors at university level courses can have an impact when they teach them by not simply explaining simple technical tasks, but explaining the broader social impacts that our careers can have through their own experience. This can help girls create their love and reason to be in STEM. These are the passions that carry us through our academic and professional careers. This can help girls who can't get away from their phones realize that that runs from science and technology, or the girls who love collecting stones, that she can love to develop a career in metallurgy engineering or material science. Or my personal one, that numbers on a sheet of paper can make a difference in a person's life and make their jobs easier through industrial engineering. STEM is far away from needing people who are just about the facts and numbers. I know all of my engineering friends joined engineering for a reason. Like for example, studying mechanical engineering or biomedical engineering to learn how to make human processes to help human amputees around the world. These are the type of things that give us passion and fire our soul. The next thing we need to do is give a platform for women leaders in STEM. So thank you TEDx for letting me doing this. But really, we need to realize that our female role models in STEM they're just regular girls that, yeah, we might have a passion for math and science and technology, but we might also have other passions like dancing, for example. I remember performing in this very stage, too. 
or that we might also love doing makeup and spend too much time watching YouTube tutorials on them. But honestly, the fact is that we're just regular people and we have to portray that we can all hold multiple identities. So that makes it easier and takes the pressure away from women in industry. Yeah, we don't have to try hard to fit in with our male peers. We're our unique person. And girl, you shine that light because that light is what helps you stand out. Honestly, it's what's helped me get here where I am and stand out to find a job in different Fortune 500 companies. So I think it works. But building a platform also helps us find other women so we can connect, our, share our struggles, share our lessons learned, share our tips and experiences or opportunities we didn't know existed. So bringing more women in the picture doesn't only mean more women in STEM, it means more women priority in the workplace. It means we can create solutions that to, to make groundbreaking innovations that we couldn't do so before. So we need to continue to fund and be engaged with organizations such as MISE, SHIP, CASI, SWE, WISE, and others because these are the type of opportunities that makes us leaders. These are the type of opportunities that lets us be role models. I remember being engaged in robotics teams for little girls, and um, honestly, it's been one of the most rewarding experiences when I hear a little girl say, yo quiero ser como tú cuando sea grande. These type of opportunities makes us leaders because leaders are not those who are in power, but those who empower others. Thank you.